It is a new era for Indiana State and the Sycamores. New Jersey's own Mark Mitchell here to talk to me about it. He wins everywhere he goes. Let's talk about what's ahead for Indiana State. Locked on women's basketball starts now. You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, everyone, and happy Tuesday. I'm Howard Megdahl, and I want to welcome you to Locked On Women's Basketball. Thank you to everyone who makes us a priority the way we make you a priority. Over 200,000 of you listened in April alone showing up for us the way we show up for you six days a week. And of course, it is not just me. It is the incredible team over at The Next, where we have over 100 reported pieces every single month. Make sure you subscribe, $9 a month, $72 a year. We, of course, have an MVC reporter. We have reporters across the women's basketball landscape. TheNextHoops.com is where you can find it all. And I am delighted to be joined by the newest head coach at Indiana State, somebody who, listeners, you need to understand where Mark Mitchell goes, victories follow. Uh, He has taken a path uh, through the Garden State right up on into a national championship. He has done it all. And now he is at Indiana State. Uh, I had the pleasure of seeing him over at the Final Four. Now, chance to chat about his latest project. Coach, welcome to the program. There's a lot to be excited about at Indiana State, a bit of a sleeping giant. Take me through what were kind of the top line reasons why this was so appealing to you now. Well, first first of all, Howard, I just want to say thank you for having me on. I uh Truly, truly appreciate it. Um, uh, any exposure that we can get here at Indiana State, uh, I would love to have. Uh, so I really appreciate that. Uh, what what enticed me here and what what uh, intrigued me? Uh, I mean, I, I would be quite honest with you, Howard. This is a uh, this is a godsend. Um, I, I uh, I've been in New Jersey all my life, uh, most of my life, and coaching there and. I came out to Indianapolis to take over the University of Indianapolis uh, head coaching position there. Uh, you know, what enticed me to come out to to the Midwest was uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, we were supposed to be transitioning from Division two to Division one uh, going into the um, Ohio Valley Conference. So that intrigued me. I, I wanted to get out to the Midwest. Uh, it's a little bit of a slower uh, lifestyle for my family, my, my children. Uh, so I'm getting up in age now. So I said, let me start slowing down a little bit. Um, so that got me out here. But when I got out here, I realized that uh, we're, we're, we weren't going to Division I. Uh, and my my dream uh, is to be a Division I coach. I coached at St. Peter's University, a Division I program in the MAC conference. Um, uh, so it's my dream to be a Division I you know, college coach. I want to coach on the biggest level. Uh, I, I want to win conference championships and go into the NCAA tournament. Uh, and I want to get to the final four. I want to win a national championship at the division one level. So uh, Indiana state, you know, it just came up. Uh, the job, the job was open. Um, I spoke to my agent, uh, shout out to uh, Brian Stanchak and the BDS agency. Uh, spoke to my, uh, my agent about it. He said he would look into it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I thought I had another opportunity at another uh, university, but they they decided to go in another direction and hire someone else. Uh, so I said I went back to Brian. I'm like, what's going on with Indiana State? And um, uh, I just sent in, uh, you know, sent, sent an uh, email to the, the athletic director here, Angie Lansing. And uh, she she was kind enough to respond and said, hey, I spoke to your agent. You need to apply. <laughs> so. I, uh, I immediately applied, um, and uh, I just think that this place is a sleeping giant. I mean, uh, we saw what the men's program did last season, uh, winning over 30 games, mm-hmm. uh, went to the NIT finals, and I honestly think that the men's program, along with Seton Hall, should have uh, should have been in the NCAA tournament. Yes, um, that was my, that's just my opinion. Uh, 
but I was fortunate enough. To, I went to the um, semifinals at, at Butler to see Indiana State play, uh, and then Seton Hall played Georgia after that. You know, so it was like uh, uh, it was a sea of blue <laughs> uh, in Butler and in in, uh, in the arena. And I go, wow, this is incredible! Like the the amount of support that came out for the men's program. So when this came up and, uh, and, and, and now that I have an opportunity to be here, I, I see the type of support that Indiana State has and, uh, you know, the history of and, uh, and all of those things. So uh, I just want to uh, bring some type of excitement, uh, a winning culture, uh, win the, the MVC here uh, at Indiana State. Um, I just want to get that done. It's something that we've seen again and again. And to just give our listeners a sense of it, uh, you know, as you mentioned, you come from Jersey, uh, from Elizabeth, uh, you were at uh, St. Peter's and that was not a powerhouse when you got there. There were, you know, far more losing seasons than winning seasons. And that changed under you. You took them all the way to the Mac championship game and I, I believe you were Mac Coach of the Year, right? When you were when you were over there too. Am I remembering that right? Yeah, that's that is correct. Uh, but uh, just so you understand the history of St. Peter's, uh, St. Peter's used to be uh, somewhat of a powerhouse when uh, Coach yeah. Mike Grinelli was coaching uh, uh, a couple of decades ago. Uh, when I was a high school coach at Elizabeth High School, I would have my my team uh, in Mike Grinelli's uh, team camp at St. Peter's. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's how far back it goes. Uh, yeah. uh, but, you know, uh, taking over that program, I knew that it didn't have any uh, culture or tradition since Coach Grinelli left. Um, uh, he was the last coach of the year at St. Peter's uh, in the MAC conference, and that was 20 mm -hmm. years prior to me being there. Uh, so for me to uh, to get in there and, and the work that we did with myself and my assistant coaches and and all of our players uh, to, to, to get our team to the, to St. Peter's, uh, get St. Peter's to the MAC Conference Championship uh, was quite a feat. And we did it in the COVID year. Right. Uh, and and let, me, let me give you the proper context, if I can. Please, please do. Uh, it was COVID, okay? Everything's locked down, shut down. Uh, uh, I had a conversation with our team uh, at the beginning of uh, the season mm -hmm. and said, what do you all want to do? Do you really want this? If so, we're going to have to make major sacrifices. So mm -hmm. the young ladies, uh, to their credit, all came together and said, yeah, we really want to do this. So I had to petition St. Peter's to put us all in one dorm so we could stay together. Uh, they uh, eventually said yes. So we, we moved all of us into one dorm. Um, the young ladies didn't get to go home for Thanksgiving or Christmas. Uh, that's a huge sacrifice, not to see your families. Yeah. All you saw was each other and us. Uh, so, you know, we did a nice Thanksgiving dinner for them. Uh, we had a uh, secret Santa and nice dinner and all of that for Christmas, but we stayed together and, and nobody went home. Uh, so uh, uh, hats off to all of those young women uh, in that program. And we sacrificed and we we we, we scratch, scratched and scraped and did what we had to do. We didn't have a home gym that year. Uh, the gym was being renovated. So we had to practice in a high school gym. Hmm. Uh, Which high school gym? Where were you guys? I'm sorry? Where, which high school gym were you guys? Oh, Marist, Marist High School in uh, Bayonne, Bayonne, sure. New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So we practiced at Marist High School, but we played all of our home games at New Jersey City University. Mm -hmm. uh, ironically, that's where I started my college career Go uh, as an assistant coach. Yes, uh, so we played at in, we played our home games at NJCU. We practiced at, uh, at Marist High School in Bayonne, New Jersey. And... Uh, and, and we get to the conference championship, and I got coach of the year that year, uh, co-coach of the year, uh, along with Brian Georges from Marist right. College. Uh, so that's quite a I, – I think that's quite an accomplishment to do under those circumstances at St. Peter's. No doubt. You know, and 20 years, 20 years go by, and boom, 
we're in the conference championship and and uh my peers uh well most of my peers uh voted me for coach of the year so uh, it, shout, it, you know shout out to brian georges he's a he was a tre tremendous coach at marist and uh, i have nothing but uh respect for him you you and me both sir well a lot more to come we're, we're gonna talk as we uh, so often do on this program about uh, FDU Florham, and we'll also talk about Indiana State as well. I, I Listeners know that th this is a delight for me to be able to go in-depth on Jersey basketball too, but we'll, we the Sycamores and what's to come is also really fascinating. So we will be back in segment two and segment three with Mark Mitchell about that. Uh, but first, I want to tell you guys about game time and game time and the game time app is just the best way to be able to go get tickets and those of you who are seeing this boom around the wnba right now understand it's not so easy mark and you're in your uh adopted home state the tickets are going fast and furious at the moment and so game time allows you to do a couple of things number one make sure you're able to get the tickets that you want Number two, make sure you're able to get them at the best possible price, which is not so easy in the world of Caitlin Clark and the WNBA of today. And number three, you can see where you're sitting. Uh, I have a basketball obsessive daughter who very much needs to see exactly where we're going to sit at any given time. So game time gives you the chance to do all of it. Download the app right now. And we have a special offer for you that takes the guesswork out of it. Use the code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use the code L O C K E D O N N H L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Back here with Indiana State head coach Mark Mitchell. And so, Mark, we understand that FDU Florham is not necessarily a basketball powerhouse uh, when you get there. You turn it into a place where you went 33-0 and and won a national championship there. I guess just bigger picture for me, like take me through how you instill a culture there and what you can take from that run and use it in Indiana State? Well, I, I don't want to make a long story. I don't want to have a long story, but it's just unique how I got that job. Uh, yeah, tell us. It, it's okay. We're here for law enforcement. Yeah, well, uh, to be to be quite frank with you, if, if I'm not mistaken, two other people were offered the job prior mm -hmm. to me, and they both turned it down. Uh, uh, and I'd say this because you know, they turned it down because it didn't pay enough, not enough money. Mm -hmm. um, I was never, I've never gotten to this business for money. Uh, it's all about the passion and, and the love of the game. Uh, and my end goal, uh, I, I want to win a national championship. So, uh, so I, I got, I, I, when I went up to the job, uh, they offered, they offered me the job when I went for my interview and I go, yes, I had no idea how much it paid. I yeah. found out later how much it paid and and uh, found out a couple of people were offered the job and turned it down because it didn't pay enough. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm just happy to had, I was just so fortunate to get that job. Uh, so, so extremely happy. Uh, so for young coaches out there, you know, you, you make the best of what you have. You go, you go find a coach, you find a job and you make it, you make it the best job there is. So, um, Getting that job, uh, I just knew that we would win. I told my I told my boss at the time. I said we're going to win a national championship. He laughed at me. He says, uh, "Just win some games." Uh, this is a tough conference. It's a Pennsylvania League conference. We're the only Jersey school in the league. We have to travel there six times. They only have to travel to us once. Uh, and I remember all those conversations. I said, "Don't worry, coach." I said, "Don't worry. We're we're going to win. We'll, we'll win it." And uh, we went out and we worked. Uh, and I just think that that type of work ethic uh, tr uh, translates anywhere you go. So uh, I'm here at Indiana State now. I'm super happy to be here, um, putting together a, a superstar uh, 
uh, coaching staff. Uh, and we're going to we're going to go out and work. We're going to outwork everyone. Uh, we're going to do what we have to do to win. And I'm just going to bring all of that, uh, you know, my my grassroots and uh, where I come from. And and, and I'm just going to bring it here to Indiana State and that type of energy and that type of work ethic and that type of competitiveness uh, being a Jersey kid. That's just who I am. And that's what we're going to do here at Indiana State. So to that end, I mean, there's a couple of interesting threads out of that. And so you talk about winning an MVC championship. And for the, those, I mean, our, our listeners know, because we, we, we cover the Missouri Valley Conference on a regular basis. Like it is a very, very tough league mm -hmm. top to bottom. But to go out and win that, there's the geographical footprint that you can usually use. You are living in a moment where the state of Indiana is being recruited differently uh, than it was even five or 10 years ago. I mean, you look at what uh, Terry Morin did and, and mm -hmm. is continuing to do it at Indiana. It's so interesting to me because, again, there's this idea, and we both share, right, this idea of Indiana being this basketball haven. In a lot of ways, it is, but a lot of ways that was reserved for the men's game, even, even in Bloomington. Mm -hmm. This was – not a focus until Terry came in and built what she's built. So for you being there now, seeing where, you know, where you are at UND, seeing what you're doing now, seeing it at a moment where I think it's fair to say that what Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever are doing are bringing attention to this game at the very uh, top of the game as well. Does it change your strategy in terms of how much you need to be recruiting here in Indiana and how much you are thinking about, say, you know, you know this, for instance, New Jersey and bringing kids and building a pipeline uh, mm -hmm. out to the Midwest. Listen, I'm, I'm, I just don't discriminate. <laughs> I want to win games. Uh, uh, I have a certain uh, way of coaching. I have a certain style of play that I want to play. Uh, and I don't care where you're from. Uh, uh, I want to play that style. And there are uh, psh, a lot of uh, young women in the state of Indiana that can play the way I want to play. Uh, I have a freshman coming in this year um, uh, who I believe is going to be uh, a game changer and, and, and dynamic uh, as a freshman moving forward. I think she was just uh, under-recruited, in my opinion. Again, my opinion. Right. Um, but I think that she's going to be spectacular and dynamic. So um, who's that? Who, who's that freshman? <laughs> Her name is uh, uh, Denia Jacobs. Okay. Uh, Where's she, she from? She's from um, Warren Central High School in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think, you know, I think she's got some work to do defensively, uh, learn how to play better defense without fouling and, you know, without using her hands so much. Uh, but once we coach her up, I think that she's going to be nothing short of spectacular uh, uh, for, for us here at Indiana State. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I mean, we have a couple of recruits uh, out of the transfer portal on campus uh, this week. Uh, one, one today, another one's coming in on Friday uh, from, from the East Coast, from New Jersey. Mm. Uh, if... Uh, I believe if we get uh, these young ladies, you know, one the ones coming in today is from California. The ones coming in Friday is from Jersey. Uh, I've known her for years. Uh, uh, if I can get that kid, I think that's going to open up the pipeline from from the East Coast, New York, New Jersey area for young ladies to come out here and play at, at, at Indiana State. But um, I just want any any kid from anywhere that they play our style. And that's going to win the uh, the MVC and and make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. That's uh, uh that's my expectation that we're going to get those kids and, and get it done. It's really interesting. Again, uh, when we're back in segment three to talk about the particular challenges of when you are taking over, the particular challenges of coaching now. It, it's it's so fascinating to me because it is changing fast. Uh, and in, in terms of the style that you play, uh, that overlap is going to be really interesting to me, you know, pace of play and offense as well. So a lot more to get to in segment three. We'll be back 
uh, with you in just a moment uh, with Mark Mitchell, uh, head coach at Indiana State. But first, Locked On Women's Basketball is brought to you by Prize Picks. And Prize Picks offers you these opportunities not just to play daily fantasy, and it is the easiest and the best daily fantasy game for you to get. But there are these special opportunities now to win 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You turn $10 into $1,000. So there's basketball, hockey, college basketball, WNBA, and women's college basketball, always a part of prize picks, which you love to see given that opportunity. You can do everything, combine even leads between LeBron, Caitlin Clark, Connor McDavid, Jude Bellingham, all in the same entry. How do you do it? Well, download the Prize Picks app today and use the code LOCKEDONNBA. There's a pretty cool option. There's a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, download the app, use the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A, and they'll first deposit match you up to $100. Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. So back here with Mark Mitchell of Indiana State. And coach, two parts to what we were talking about. One is that in a way that I think was ahead of where the game has gotten to now, your teams have typically been offensive powerhouses. You play fast. After you floor them, you were usually top 25, if not top 50 in the nation in pace routinely. Mm -hmm. And I know this is something that you have emphasized Is that something that you intend to bring to Indiana State, number one? And number two, does that make it easier to be able to sell kids on the vision, knowing they're going to be able to come to Indiana State and play the type of up-tempo fun game that so many players are looking to do? Yeah, well, uh, a a lot goes into that. Uh, You you can, for that pace, you could thank Jalissa Lewis and uh, Alyssa McDonough and Kyra Dayon and Kyra Dayon and the list goes on. Taya Thornton, uh, you know, Kendrea Williams. I can say so many names that uh, former players uh, that play that way. Uh, so it is absolutely uh, exciting and fun to play. It, it is. It's great to watch. Like people come out and watch the game because it's fun to see. Uh, but we put a lot of hard work in. Um, uh, you, you'll you'll see a lot of that out of uh, Denia Jacobs this year. So, uh, and so I, I got a I got a shout out to Andrea Williams by the way who went with you from FDU over to St. Peter's and was a double digit scorer for you all four seasons. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I don't. Kendra is special. Like, yeah. uh, you know, real quick, she came coming out of high school, no Division One wanted her. Mm-hmm. Fine, I I I I took her uh, along with her, Taya Thornton, no Division One wanted her. I took her uh, and Taya had some injuries at FDU uh, uh, both years that she was there. So it kind of shortened her career there. uh, But she was absolutely uh, uh, out of every, out of every player I've ever coached. She's in the top 10 of, of of my players that I've ever coached. Taya Thornton. Uh, She was spectacular. Kendrea Williams was a national rookie of the year at division three. So, I mean, (laughs) like, what, what can I say? I get, the, I, she, you know, I get the job at St. Peter's. She she transferred in with me. Taya Thornton did. Uh, Gabby Harris did as well, who's a Division three player who was at William Patterson, who transferred to FDU and then transferred to St. Peter's with me. Um, and those three young ladies just shaped the program at, at St. Peter's for me. But Kendrea ends, ends up being all-time three-point shooter mm-hmm. at, at St. Peter's. And so I coached the all-time three-point shooter at FDU Florham and Leanne Lively and the all-time three-point shooter at uh at St. Peter's as well. So I got to get it done here at at uh at uh, uh Indiana State as well. So we'll 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 be doing that as well. But having right. having having said that, uh uh when you're recruiting, uh you gotta be honest and open with these young women and their families and tell them this is what we're about, this is what we're gonna do. Uh if you if you if you want to put the work in, uh you're gonna have a great, great experience and a great time. Uh uh, winning a lot of games so that's all we that's all we sell is uh uh truth related to it 
related to and, and by, I just have to shout out Kendrea Pride of Piscataway, New Jersey. Oh, uh, yes, absolutely. P, P Way. That's right. So when you are thinking about that arc, you, you come to FDU Florham in 0910, the championship comes 1314. Building a college program is obviously more complicated than it's ever been for all the reasons that you've outlined. It is also a scenario where you are looking at a build potentially faster because of the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, for listeners to understand, so you officially get the job May 10th. The portal closes on May 1st in terms of people leaving. So there's no, uh, you're, you're essentially getting kind of the worst of it in that way mm -hmm. as you're trying to build here uh, from square one. Obviously, year one is in many ways next year because it's a full season for you to do it. But yeah. I'm wondering how you see it and the way in which when you talk to Indiana State, that conversation goes, I can win in this amount. You know, what what what, what does that look like in your vision? Yeah, it's, yeah, you know, getting a job at this time is, is a kind of a, uh, uh, you, you're kind of behind the eight ball, if you will. Yeah. Um, uh, many, many, many of the young ladies that, that I know that I would be in on, uh, if had I gotten the job, uh, a month ago, right. um, have gone, you know, so, you know, they're signed, they're signed at other places. So now I, you know, transfer portal is, it's closed and you're kind of sifting through and, and now, Many of those young ladies that that you think that can help the program, like the young ladies that are coming up um, this week for us, uh, we know that we, they can help this program and, and turn this program around it quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, with the transfer portal, uh, I'm all for it. Hey, listen, you know, kids should have the uh, to, the ability to to move uh, move around if they if they choose to. Uh, but I think building a relationship with the young ladies, uh, I'm really big on relationships. Um, if we can uh, have a solid, solid relationship and, uh, and a, a solid understanding of one another, I think that we can build this program very, very quickly. Uh, but yes, uh, next season, uh, next year, you know, uh, having a full year under our belt and, and able to uh, get into that transfer portal at an earlier time and with the connections that I have and my assistant coaches have as well, I think that we're going to uh, uh, really uh, – change this program uh, in a positive way. It's happened everywhere you've gone. I don't doubt it for a second, if you'll uh, I'll permit the point of personal privilege when I say that, uh, as, as we've seen your career unfold. I'm excited to see what's next uh, in this program. Last thing, and just this is most important, obviously, when are you going to non-conference schedule back here in Jersey? And uh, when do we get to uh, see you guys play back East? I, I listen. I already I reached out to St. Peter's already. Uh, they declined. They said they had ah. the schedule done already. So uh, I'm certainly, uh, definitely, most definitely, uh, want to play uh, back home. Uh, uh, particularly if I get this young lady on Friday, yes. uh, we'll go back home, and and that's just going to just excite everyone. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm definitely going to reach out to you know the Manhattans and the. Ryder and, and Monmouth and uh, Seton Hall, you know, and all of those guys. So uh, for sure, we, we definitely want to play back there. Uh, it'll be it'll be a great, great opportunity for us uh, and to showcase our program here and, uh, uh, you know, possibly get a couple of those kids from uh, the Northeast to come out uh, to Terre Haute, uh, Indiana. It's, it, it's an exciting prospect. We've had Tony Bazell on the program. I know Tony's a listener. So no, he's, yeah. he's, he's fantastic. Tony is my guy Tony through Bizzell. in and throughout. He is absolutely fantastic. He sure, he sure is. So look forward to covering you there at Walsh gymnasium at a future date to be determined as well. Mm -hmm. But Mark Mitchell, thank you for your time. Uh, and again, really excited to see where we go from here uh, to our listeners. Thank you as always for making us your first listen every day. I'll be back with you tomorrow as we are six days a week. Until then, I am Howard Magdal wishing all of you a wonderful Tuesday. You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.